This is chapter 5 of this online course. I hope you will enjoy it. In this chapter, we will be talking about different design elements for vertical high V alignment. When we talk about the vertical alignment or profile, we are showing the elevations of different points along the roadway. This is for providing proper drainage, driver comfort, and also increased safety for our designed highway. Another purpose of profile or vertical alignment is to connect the two tangents or two slopes by means of vertical curves for added safety and riding comfort. In this picture, you see an example of a ground profile and a proposed highway profile, including the intersection points and the vertical curves. There are two types of vertical curves based on their direction and how their curvature is pointing upward or downwards. The first type is called a crest vertical curve. When the curvature is pointing downwards, we can either have the first and second grade of the slopes or the tangents known as G1 and G2. They can be both positive or both negative, but we still have a crest curve. On the other side, we have the sag curve when the curvature is pointing upward. And in this case, similar to the crest curves, both G1 and G2 can be either positive or negative. The details of one vertical curve is shown in this picture. And as we talked about this before, the main purpose of the vertical curves is to connect two tangents or two slopes for right safety and comfort. Now, if we assume that the first slope is shown as G1 going uphill, that's why it is positive, and G2 is going downhill, that's why it is negative. The starting point of our curve is called PVC or point of vertical curve. The ending point of our curve is called PVT or point of vertical tangent. And the point at which the two tangents are intersecting each other is called point of vertical intersection or PVI. By definition, the length of the vertical curve is defined as the horizontal distance between the starting point and ending point of the vertical curve. This is important not to confuse this with the actual arc lengths, which we will see in the horizontal curve design. And the distance between the starting point and the point of intersection will be half of the length of our vertical curve. The difference between the two tangents or the two slopes G1 and G2 can be shown as A here is the absolute difference between G1 and G2. To derive the equation of a vertical curve, we can assume a Cartesian system or an XY axis starting at the PVC or the starting point of the curve and the X is going out towards the ending point of the curve and the Y direction is basically showing the elevation of each point along the curve. Vertical curve is a part of a parabola and we can write the parabolic equation for our vertical curves. That's Y equal to AX squared plus bx plus c. And by means of basic geometry, we should be able to derive the three parameters a, b, and c to write the full equation of our vertical curve. Once we do that, a can be defined as the difference between the two slopes, g2 minus g1, divided by two times the lengths of the vertical curve. B can be defined as equal to G1 or the first or the initial slope of the initial tangent. And C can be defined 
as the elevation of the starting point of our vertical curve or the elevation of PVC. Once we know A, B, and C, we can write the equation of this curve and we should be able to estimate the elevation of each point on this vertical curve. To be more specific about various parameters on our vertical curve, we can write three more equations to find the distance between the extension of the initial tangent and any point on our curve. That is defined by y and that's a, which if you recall from the previous slides, is the absolute difference between g1 and g2 times x squared divided by 200 times l. That should give you the distance between this tangent and any point on our vertical curve. At the middle point, y of m can be defined as a times l divided by 100. And at the end point of our curve, the y of f can be defined as a times l over 200. Another useful notation to use for our vertical curves is called the rate of vertical curvature or k and that is defined as the length of the vertical curve divided by a. When we are designing the vertical curves we also need to check for different stopping side distance criteria to make sure that our vertical curve is providing the safe stopping distance at different scenarios. To do that, we need to consider the height of the driver's eye, which is defined as H1, as well as the height of the object on the other side of the road, which is defined as H2. Let's say if we have this vertical curve here, length of the crest vertical curve is defined as L, but the minimum stopping side distance is the safe distance the driver can see the object on the other side of the road and have enough time to stop the vehicle before hitting the object. That's the first criteria in the side distance requirements. There's another criteria for crest curves that is called passing side distance, and that happens when a vehicle is trying to pass another vehicle on a vertical curve. In this case, we need to consider the minimum passing side distance, but the difference is that the height of the driver I, H1, is remaining the same, while H2 will change from the height of the object to the height of the car on the other side of the road that the driver is trying to pass. And the third criteria in designing the vertical curves, in this case, the sag vertical curves, is called the headlight side distance. And the reason to do that is when a vehicle is driving in a sag vertical curve, the headlights will be limited to covering a, a limited distance ahead of the vehicle. And so we need to make sure that the minimum headlight side distance is enough based on the criteria that is defined as the height above the pavement of the headlight, as well as the angle at which the headlights are illuminating the road ahead of the driver. To wrap up this chapter, we talked about the vertical highway alignment and its elements, how to estimate different components of vertical curves, including sag and crest curves, and what criteria we need to consider for stopping side distance in vertical curves. That's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.